Hi guys and welcome back to my channel Tessie's World. Thank you so much for tuning in today guys. I really do appreciate it. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with your friends, your family, and your foe. Uh, anybody right now that you think needs this, needs to hear these words and understand how important they are as a black woman. So now today guys we have part number two. Now if you didn't get to watch part number one i'm gonna go ahead and leave it right here or put the description or put the link in the description box so that you can click there but after you finish watching part part one bring your little tail on back here and watch part two poo okay because yeah you need to watch both of them to get all of this right so we left off last time i think the last topic that we talked about was um black women being against black women right and us not supporting ourselves and us not having other people support us which leaves the door open for nobody to support us right because if you're not supporting me i'm not supporting you this black man is not supporting me that sh that sets the president that sets the example for everyone else to feel like they don't have to support us they don't have to treat us kindly they don't have to respect us and you know all these other things that happen once people see us getting treated a certain way so right now i'm gonna call on all my other black sisters watching this and all my black men watching this to change the narrative and begin to support begin to love begin to respect your other fellow black sisters and black men you understand black men you need to support us because at the end of the day regardless of everything it's always black women that have to deal with everything you know i mentioned that in one of my previous videos like black men think they deal with a lot and i'm not saying they don't i'm not saying they don't but i feel like black women have it worse than black men on, on some topics and some things you know what i'm saying like for instance <coughs> A black man could go out right now and do something, do something stupid, right? Something dumb. He's going to have like four or five other black men cheer him on. Guys. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. I don't know what's in my throat. Hold on. All right. I'm sorry about that. I don't know. So he's going to have four or five other black men applaud him. Regardless of the stupid crap that he's doing, he is. You know, a black woman could go outside on her stuff, you know, have a business, be looking cute, um, carry herself well. And before she gets applause for that, before she gets, um, before she gets applause, before she gets, uh, compliments, that's what I was trying to thank you guys. That's what I was trying to say. Before she gets any of that, she's going to get nastiness. She's going to get judgment. She's going to get bitterness she's gonna get all these other things before someone just tells her wow you look really nice today or wow i love the way you carry yourself or girl you did that that business is flourishing you understand what i'm saying like why why and why i don't understand it but like i mentioned in a previous video it's because we've always been seen as competition you know it's always been this type of competition thing with us where it's like I'm gonna do better. I, I'm I'm better than you. I'm gonna do better than you. Even if I'm not better than you, I'm not gonna let you know that I'm not better than you. Because guess what? I'm better than you. We gotta stop this. We really have to stop this because ugh, we have to stop this. All right, guys. So with that, we're gonna move right along because I did say who supports us, and we I don't feel like anyone supports us. I do feel like we have bouts here and there. You know, people choose what black they want to um support or who is a black they they want to support it's just it's just all this whatever um with that being said i also feel like black women carry the atlas on our shoulders there are some times that i'm tired because i feel like the man who's carrying the atlas the globe the world i feel like that i feel like that sometime going outside coming back home i'm just like <sighs> mentally emotionally exhausted because I feel like I had to encounter and carry so much from so many different angles. You know what I mean? I'm not a mother right now, you know, but I am a friend. I am a wife. I am a daughter. I am a sister. I am a lot of things, you know, and it may not be nowhere near as heavy as what a lot of mothers are carrying. But that does not mean that my own things don't feel like a burden. You know, does that make any sense? All right, guys. So, 
Yeah, uh, we already spoke about black mothers. Um, growing up with a black mother is definitely, it's interesting. <laughs> it's very interesting. It's, it's very interesting. However, with that being said, I wouldn't want to be raised by anyone else but a black mother. So let's keep that in there. Some of you guys need to understand how powerful and how wonderful, amazing, and awesome it is to have a black mother. Respect your mother, guys. You know, they don't always do right, but they're humans. We don't always do right. But at the end of the day, basic respect is, is more than anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're a black woman right now, like I am in my 30s, and you're feeling this burden, you're feeling this weight, then you can only imagine what your mom felt in her time of growing up, whether she was 18, 25, or 40. You know what I mean? Like, it's freaking heavy. So with it being heavy, understand, try to get to know and understand what it was that was her struggles, what was her pains, what was what she was going through that when she had you or when she was doing whatever she was doing like why she came off the way she came off now that's also not to say black mothers that there are not some things that you can change right there are some definitely some things that you can change but i do understand how they in some sense are hereditary you know i i think people don't don't say that but i definitely think that's true i think it's true to say that you know, if your mom was raised this way and she didn't learn to be any better or she didn't unlearn certain things, she's definitely going to be just like your grandmother was. That's why we see cycles and it's generational. You know what I mean? So, yeah, love your, love your black mother. But black mothers, we also have to do better. You know, spanking your little two year old because she picked up a piece of bubble gum is, is crazy. You know, calling your little man a nigga and telling him man to fuck up. It's crazy. You know, um, yeah, let's talk about that real quick. That's crazy. Uh, that's why so many black men are emotionally un em emotionally undeveloped. You know, because they never got a chance to cry. They never got a chance to weep. They never got a chance to basically say, my feelings are hurt. You know? And that's a problem. The same as, as I said earlier in a part one, as women. You know, I feel like there was this thing that as soon as we were, um, as soon as we were born, that was kind of like, she can handle it. You know, she can handle it. I remember one time I asked my mother, you know, I said to her, I said, you don't even ask me how I'm doing. You don't, you don't even, you know, seem to care about that side of me. And she was like, honestly, Tussie, I never thought, I never thought about it in that way. You know, I always just thought you could handle it. I always just thought you were fine. And because I am where I am, I understand why she thought that and I understand why she felt like that because that's how she was always looked at. You know, nobody ever asked her how she was doing. Nobody ever asked her if she was okay because they just always felt she could handle it. So that's why I'm saying you have to understand where your parents are at. But parents, we're in a new day and age now, honey. That does not mean that you can't do some work of unlearning as well, right? Right. So I would like to also say this, right? Black women are always made to think that we have to deal with a whole bunch of hogwash before we get anything good. And what I mean by that, because I'm going to break that down right now. What I mean by that is I seen a post once one time that was like, um, see, if you just hold me down, you know what I mean? And stick around. You don't know what the prize is at the end. Oh, okay, so I need to hold I need to be I need to hold you down while you treating me bad, talking to me nasty and crazy. I need to hold you down while you're not giving me any type of support, not just financially, you're not giving me any emotional, you're not giving me any mental, you're not giving me any spiritual, you're not giving me any type of support, but I need to hold you down. You out here cheating on me, you out here got me looking stupid, you out here doing all these things, but I am to hold you down because at the end the prize is what? A ring? Boy, bye. Okay, I don't need that I don't want it because at the end of the day if you can't treat me good as a human being I don't care what you can give me at the end of the tunnel because what I had to go through the scrapes and bruises and bones that were broken that I had to go through to get to the end of the tunnel when I'm at the end of the tunnel now I what 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 do I have I'm mentally screwed up I'm emotionally screwed up you know, I'm spiritually jacked up because I had to scrape my knees to follow you down this tunnel. So I, I, I just, you know what I'm saying? That, 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 you know what I mean? Like that, that right there just, just, just needs to go ahead and be flushed down the toilet because that's hogwash. 
You understand? That's really hogwash. I I seen that you know everybody knows that Gucci and Keisha, Keish, how you say her name? Is it Keisha, Kishana, something like that? I'm sorry, Keisha. I know it's Keisha Dior, or something like that. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I know they got married, and everybody in that moment when they got married was like bigging them up you know and they were basically trying to say see black women if you did what Keisha did you'll be good Keisha is Keisha Keisha ain't me and I'm not Keisha so if that's what Keisha decided to do for her man then that's what Keisha decided to do for her man but I am not going to be brushed with a brush that says that I need to put up with all of that just to get a good man at the end of the day because there are good men out here that won't put you through that and then what happens is Woo! What happens is after that is I done sat here and dealt with you and now I'm leaving and now the good man that been watching me now has to carry all this baggage and deal with all this baggage that I brought with me to this relationship regardless of if I try to drop it with you and leave it at the curbside it doesn't matter because let's be honest residue is residue so now he's loving me but I just can't get over the way you used to talk to me and I can't get over the way you used to treat me so now he's doing all the right things right but I I don't believe it so now in not believing it I'm screwed up you know and now I'm messing this up Woo, child. Keisha is not me, and I am not Keisha. If that is what Keisha wanted to do, then Keisha had the right to do what she wanted to do. But I want you to stop telling black women that they have to deal and be dangled on a goddamn bungee cord just to get something at the end. Because let me tell you something. Half of the time at the end ain't nothing there, sis. Ain't nothing there. Nothing is there. And then when he done got up and he got good and now you are broken down, he don't care to build you back up. He don't care to, to help you... Um, to help you heal all that he has given you he don't care so if right now you in a relationship like that and he ain't doing you right sis leave if they ain't doing you right whether you in a same sexual couple relationship or not I don't really care about that what I care about is you being treated like a like a human being if he is not doing that leave I know that people say years oh I've been with you for years oh I love you so much but my question to you is how can you love a person that doesn't love you my question to you, which, which I guess that's not true because you can love a person. So whatever with that. I'm sorry about that. Um, but also, you can't let somebody break you down like that because you have to look in the mirror every morning. You know what I mean? He ain't look, when you look in that mirror, you see you. But if you done, if you done digested or if you done digested or took in too much of him, when you look in that mirror, you don't even recognize yourself no more. So don't, don't don't I mean a I, hey, to each his own if that's what you want to do that's what you want to do but I'm just saying that's not something I'm willing to do I'm not doing that I didn't do it when I was a teenager I damn sure wouldn't do it now and I damn sure think that that is one of the most calculated horrible terrible things that is said and put on black women because yeah screw that for real screw that like I said Keisha ain't me and I ain't Keisha if that's what Keisha wanted to do that's what she wanted to do Keisha decided a long time ago that she would stick it stick um through it with Gucci you know she made that decision whatever she's seen is what she's seen and if she's happy now she's happy but I don't think that I don't think that that is a um a standard and that's how people try to say it's a standard oh you should do this it's a standard you should no I shouldn't I shouldn't have to. I don't want it. Yeah, no thanks. I don't want it. Um, I did already mention that when black women are to be submissive. You know, a black woman is never supposed to speak up or say anything because, again, she's going to be hit with that angry. Somebody else could speak up and say what they want, and it'll be just fine. Um, there was something else I wanted to talk about. Guys, I had wrote so much. Um, I think there was something else I did want to talk about. You know, um... Yeah, I really can't remember right now. I'm so sorry. That got me hot. <laughs> As y'all can tell, that topic got me hot because that's what they do. That's what they do and that's what they think. And I'm here to tell you, I don't think like that. And um, yeah, no thanks. Again, no thanks. No, absolutely not. But um, yes, black women, love yourself, man. It all starts with loving yourself. It all starts with understanding you know, like I said, who you are as a person, understanding your flaws. Okay, we can talk about that. Understanding your flaws. We all have bad habits. We all have flaws. 
excuse me, but we can't allow someone else to beat us on our head for those flaws and those bad habits. However, we also can't continue to use that as an escape. Oh, I act like this because my mama did this. Sis, you're 35. If you haven't seen it to be fit and if you haven't seen yourself worthy yet to, you know, unlearn that, then that ain't on your mama. You know, maybe it was on your mama when you were 15, give or take. But at 35, it ain't on your mama no more. That's on you. That's something that you don't want to work at. That's something that, you know, you just want somebody to deal with, but you wouldn't deal with it from somebody else. Like, that's on you. You know, we all got flaws. And like I said, we all have bad habits, but they can all be changed. They can. And if you learn to accept your flaws, you can always find greatness in your flaws. You know, if you change those bad habits, you can understand why they were a bad habit and why it is you need to change them. Right. So stop with that. You know what I mean? Like, stop with that. Stop with that. Oh, yeah. So let's talk about this real quick, guys. So, um, yeah, you know, when I met my loving, loving, loving um, baby, I was here we go talking about the um here we go talking about the residue and how being with certain people can really mess you up right so when I first met him or whatever I felt that we weren't gonna make it right this was this this was not nothing he said this was not nothing he had done this was simply because that's what I was conditioned you know what I mean like I was conditioned on that I was conditioned on a guy telling me that I was too sassy I was conditioned on a guy telling me that I had too much attitude I was conditioned on a guy telling me that you know what I mean like I'm like I'm too much you get what I mean like I was conditioned on all those things so I was already looking for him to say it you know we're together 10 years now but in the first like two or three years I'm not gonna lie to you guys like I used to always say to him I know you're gonna leave me like, I know you're going to leave me. And he would say, what? Why would I? Why, like, babe, why am I going to leave you? And I and I, I wouldn't, I didn't know. I didn't do anything. But again, that residue, that residue, that baggage of that being what everybody else told me. And in some way, I started to internalize it and believe it. Sad, but true. And I was like, I know you're going to leave me. I know you're going to leave me. And he was like, yeah, I'm not. And then he said this famous, important, loving line. Thank you so much, babe. He said this line to me that I still remember to this day. And he said, any dude that told you that meant that they were definitely just not strong enough to deal with a strong woman like you. Or it was just the easier way for them to to say that it was your fault or something like that, you know, for you to, for, for it to end or whatever. And I was just like, wow. And to this day, he's still here. I have not changed. In some ways, I may have gotten a little worse, you know. In some ways, I may have gotten a little better. Um, but it was that moment. I already knew before the two or three years, guys. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying in that moment when he said it it really hit home like it hit my soul you know what I mean like it hit my soul and that's why to this day I definitely definitely like I'm just like wow you know I was really blessed I was really blessed to have this being this man become a part of my life you know I was really blessed on that so thank you so much for that babe I really do love you for that um Okay, so we did talk about having bad habits and flaws and understanding that they don't make you a bad person. However, I'm not saying this makes you a bad person, but like I said, if you choose not to start to grow and change, I'm not saying it makes you a bad person, but I will say you have to not want to be stagnant. You know, your flaws and habits, your bad habits do not make you a bad person, but you're going to have to um, understand them. But also, like I said, don't allow people to step on your neck because of your flaws and because of your bad habits. Because people do that too. Oh, you know, like like for instance, I, I like everybody. Again, woo, this 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 part right here. All right, so when I was young, I was always told I had a bad attitude, and now that I'm older, I realize that people constantly telling me I had a bad attitude made my attitude worse. Does that make sense? Because it was always like, oh, you got a bad attitude, and it was always like. You get what I mean? And I think that because that's something that we're known for as black women, I think I continued it, you know, sadly, I continued it because I was just like, okay, well, that's something that comes with being me. And 
It's not. You know, there's a way to say things. There's a way to feel a way without it not always having to be an attitude. You get what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So it's like, yeah, I didn't, I'm, I'm honestly just putting that together right now. But like seeing that word attitude and always having that be something that was a description of me. Oh yeah, she got an attitude. And it was like, Okay, do I really have an attitude or do you just assume that I have an attitude? And because you assume that I have an attitude, now you're giving me attitude. So let's talk about that real quick. So, one time me and babe went out to Buffalo Wild Wings, right? And there was a black waitress, dark-skinned sis, and um, I seen her. Now, for some reason, people see me and they just think that I just, again, have this horrible attitude, which I really don't. Now, the thing is, yeah, I don't take crap. I understand that, but... I'm not one to be rolling my eyes, popping my neck, and doing all that crazy stuff. I don't really do that. Like, that's just not me. That's not who I am as a person. You know what I mean? Whatever. I'm, 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 I don't do all that. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so I seen her, and I seen that she was looking at me with that type of like, ugh, you know, because that's what people think. There was an article about this. I'm going to get back to it, guys, but there was an article about this about people waitresses and waiters not wanting the black table because they thought that they were going to be problematic because they thought they were not going to tip all these negative things associated to coming to my table because I am black when you don't understand that coming to this table you're going to get good energy baby girl baby boy you're going to get good energy you don't understand that coming to this table you're going to laugh coming to this table we're going to be the easiest like waited table you had to wait on your entire shift coming to this table you are going to get a tip based on how you act but you will get a tip so it's like all of this again you know because we're black right so yeah with that being said about the buffalo wild wings that's kind of how she reacted like oh i'm about to get this black tip whatever so she came to the table already on funky and i was just like I was there with baby and I was just like, okay, did I, you know what I'm saying? I know I didn't say nothing to her. She came to the table with a little pen and a piece of paper, y'all. She was just like, literally, just like that. I swear to y'all, like, she didn't introduce herself. She didn't have a smile on her face. She was not welcoming. She had nothing. Like, she was just like, she had nothing. Okay, now let's be honest here. If you come to the table like that, what do you think you're going to get back? You know what I'm saying? But then you can't say it was me because I, I wasn't like that. I'm always smiling. You know what I mean? So you that's how you came to the table, but then you expected me to do what? Girl, <laughs> no. So she came to the table. So I was I was just there looking at the menu like, what do I want? I was asking her, you know, I wanted to get some shots because y'all know. I wanted to get some shots or whatever. So I'm just like, you know, um, what's this and this? And do you do this? Uh, we don't got it. Like, uh, just, just, just horrible, y'all. It was really just bad. To the point where I literally got up and left. I actually asked for the the waiter, uh, the the manager. I'm sorry. I asked for the manager, and I was just like, yeah, I don't um, I don't know what's going on, but she came to the table with you know funkiness, and I really didn't want to eat there no more. I was just like, let's go. And he was like, I'm so sorry that happened to you, yada yada yada. And I was just like, you see, that's the problem. You thought that was the energy you were gonna get, so you brought it already. And I was not. I didn't want to give that energy, nor did I have that energy. So now it's like, what the f? You get what I'm saying? Like, what the f? Like, this is just, it's just retarded. So we wind up leaving or whatever. But the part that killed me is across from us was a his Hispanic um family, and baby girl sat in the chair next to them, was smiling, was doing this and was doing that, and I'm just like, wow. So you came to my table, sis and gave me and my man that energy when we did nothing to you but you over here smiling cheesing and everything else with them yeah that just don't make no sense to me but that's how we treat each other guys that's how we treat each other i went out multiple times and maybe had the waiter or waitress be nervous because of the stigma that they have created about us right the the nastiness the not tipping and all that and by the end of the night was like i freaking loved you guys come back that's that's what they would say to us like i freaking loved you guys come back you know what i mean they go to like another they they go back to their co-workers and, and was like yo they was mad cool you know what i mean like they was they was cool as shit you know what i mean like was over there talking jones and laughing giggling all that but you won't know that unless you come to my table correct. If you don't come to my table correct, then for one, you're not going to stay sitting there. And for two, you're just going to get your feelings hurt. 
<laughs> so yeah guys it's just like okay you know what I'm saying like okay um all right guys like I really I didn't realize that I ran through everything so quick um I know I did part one and I guess I spoke a lot in part one uh so I guess we got through it um yeah I guess we got through it guys I mean, I think I kind of said everything I wanted to say. Um, I really did enjoy having this discussion with you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You know what I mean? Like, um, I'm sure this may not be the last time that I revisit it. Uh, I'm going to be black for the rest of my life. <laughs> I'm going to be a woman for the rest of my life. So with that being said, I will be a black woman for the rest of my life. So this is me now at 33 you know i wish i had a lot of vlog from 18 to like 25 and stuff like that um on how i progressed in some ways and i guess in some other ways where i'm still struggling but i do understand that no one understands the weight that we go through more than us you know being a black woman is a lot and i don't ever let anyone tell you that it's not don't ever ever you hear me let anyone tell you that it's not because they don't know you know even like I just said about other black sisters I don't know what sis is walking through I don't know her path I don't know her struggle she don't know mine but I do know that there are just certain basic things that we will all go through just because we are black women you know um and it's like the only way that we can make a change is making the change within thine self. That's literally the only way that we can make a change. If we don't decide to make certain changes, we're going to continue to be, I wanted to say a race. So I guess I'll say a race, a gender, a section. I can't think of a word right now, but we're going to continue to eat each other up. We're going to continue to swallow each other whole we're going to continue to start other and 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 start other um problems we're going to continue to always have problems like we have to make a change guys and i'm saying that it starts with me it starts with you you know i can't ask anyone else to support me if i'm not supporting myself you know, I can't ask anyone else to love me and respect me if I don't do it myself. And when you do it with yourself, you'll walk around different. You know, you will. You'll walk around different on this earth. And when you walk around different, then you'll start to attract different. You'll start to attract um, those people, those other people that you really want to be around. You know, it, it, it all starts with you, guys. It all starts with you. So... I'm really like, I can't believe that I made it through all of that. Guys, wow. I really made it through all of that, guys. I can't believe it. Wow, that's crazy. I'm sorry, I'm just going through my notes real quick to see if I made it through. All right, so... I think I really did make it through, guys. So with that, I am going to end by saying, you know what? Be you, black woman. Be free. Feel how you feel. Embrace how you feel. Whatever you feel is authentic. You are human, right? Because that's what you are. That's what you are. And all these other stigmas that have been placed on us does nothing but make us heavier make us heavy 